31 volts guys congratulations keep up the energy going this is just the starting and we are starting with some really easy questions now moving on forward to the question number three Two spherical nuclei have mass numbers 216 and 64 with their radii R1 and R2 respectively. The ratio R1 upon R2 equal to option A 3 is to 2, option B 1 is to 3, option C 1 is to 2 or option D 2 is to 3. Again a very simple easy question. Let's check out the answer and the answer is option A 3 is to 2 guys amazingly well done balle balle good job great work okay so after a lot of easy questions giving you the hardest let's see how many ways are able to do it guys please do let us know how many of you guys get how many questions right in the comment section below we'll be definitely waiting for you guys replies let's go a massless rod shaving length 21 has equal point masses attached to its two ends shown in the figure. Hmm, figure itself looks very complicated. Anyways, the rod is rotating about its axis passing through its center and makes an angle with the axis. I. The magnitude change of momentum of rod that is dl upon dt equals option A 2m cube omega square sine theta into cos theta option B m square omega square sine 2 theta option c mv square sine 2 theta or option d m to the power half i to the power half omega sine theta cos theta okay this is very interesting question with a lot of thetas and omegas i hope you're getting it right even if you are and don't worry guys don't worry it happens and you will definitely get it if you just invest some amount of time we are completely confident in you Option B, m square omega square sine 2 theta is the correct answer. A semiconductor having electron and hole mobilities respectively. If its intrinsic carrier density is then, what will be the value of hole concentration P for which the conductivity will be minimum at a given temperature? And the options are option A, Ni root of mu n upon mu p, option B, Nh root of mu n upon mu p, option C, Ni into root of mu p upon mu n, or option D, Nh root of a, mu p upon mu n. Okay, a lot of mu's. Interesting. But my dear students, you know what? You guys can do this very easily. So let's go ahead and the correct option is option A N I root of mu n upon mu p. Now if in case you didn't get the answer within the specified time limit, it's okay you can pause the video and then continue solving it. It's completely fine. Just be honest with you, do not cheat, do not google it especially. Okay, going ahead guys with the next question, let's check it out. And we are done halfway. We have done 5 questions guys, just 5 more questions left. And I trust that every 5 questions that you have done till now, you have got it right. And hoping that you will get the other questions also right. Now, the questions are, in terms of basic units of mass, m, length, l, time t, and charge q, the dimensions of magnetic permeability of vacuum mu naught would be, Option A, ML Q to the power minus 2. Option B, L T power minus 1, Q to the power minus 1. Option C, ML square T to the power minus 1 or Q to the power minus 2. Or option D, L T Q to the power minus 1. Dimension analysis is always a problem, man. And the correct option is option A, ML Q to the power minus 2, guys. Congratulations. People who got it right, very well done. People who didn't get it right, still very well done. Moving ahead. Okay, a big question with small answers. The black body spectrum of an object O1 is such that its radiant intensity, that is the intensity per unit wavelength interval, is maximum at a wavelength of 200 nanometers. Another object O2 has the maximum radiant intensity as 600 nanometers. The ratio of power emitted per unit area by source O1 to that of source O2 is how much? So basically they are asking you the ratio between O1 and O2. 
The options are option A 1 is to 81, option B 1 is to 9, option C 9 is to 1 or option D 81 is to 1. A very simple question, isn't it? No, it is not, I know. It's okay if you know the formula, you can do this. The correct option is guys, option D 81 is to 1. Congratulations for everyone. Okay, so now the question belongs to my favorite chapter. Interesting. A beam of light of wavelength 400 nanometers and power 1.5 milliwatts is directed at the cathode of a photoelectric cell. If only 10% of the incident photons effectively produce photoelectrons, then find current due to these electrons. Given Hc is equal to 240 electron volt nanometers and E is equal to 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulombs, which is basically the charge of an electron. The options are option A, 5 microamperes, option B, 40 microamperes, option C, 50 microamperes, or option D, 114 microamperes. And my dear students, the correct option is option C, 50 microamperes. Well done. Moving to the next question. Yup, now a question which combines physics and chemistry. The molar specific heat of a gas as given from the kinetic theory is 5 by 2 R. If it is not specified whether it is Cp or Cv, one could conclude that the molecules of the gas are definitely monoatomic or are definitely rigid diatomic or are definitely non-rigid diatomic or option D can be monoatomic or rigid diatomic. What do you guys think? Hmm, confusing, isn't it? Not exactly, because the correct option is option D can be monoatomic or rigid diatomic. Congratulations, guys. Very well done. Kudos to each and every one of you who are putting your maximum efforts to do each and every question. Congratulations. Well, 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 here we are to the final question of the entire MCG series for physics. It's really hard to actually say goodbyes to each and every one of you because you guys supported us in a manner which no one else can. I believe you guys will be supporting us in the same way in the future because we love to do this. We love to share our knowledge with each and every one of you guys and we'll definitely miss this guys, definitely. With that, with all of you being in the hearts of every teacher at Vedantu and also in mine, let's go for the final question today. Question number 10. All the best. The length of a metal wire is L1 when the tension in it is T1 and is L2. When the tension is T2, the natural length of the wire is. Option A. L1 plus L2 upon 2. Option B. Root of L1 upon I2. Option C. I1 T2 minus I2 T1 upon T2 minus T1 or option D is it I1 T2 plus L2 T1 upon T1 plus T2. Interesting, isn't it? Come on guys, you can do this. Give your best shot. And the correct option is option C, I1 T2 minus I2 T1 upon T2 minus T1. Congratulations guys, very well done. Give a huge round of applause for every one of you guys. You did a great job. So my dear students, once again, all the best for the AIMS examination. Do well. Just remember one thing, never doubt yourself. That's all. Be confident and you will be getting the best of the results. Always remember that the most beautiful scenes comes after the highest climb. So this is one of your highest climbs in your life. 